Letting one more person in. Um, yeah, I think, I think um, we welcome everyone. Um, I think it's um, 7.06 and I think we can call this meeting to order. Um, it looks like we have quorum and um, I think what we can do since Superintendent Lindsay is here and very prompt and thank you for being here. Um, what we can do is actually maybe just do um, the first agenda item, Fred, and, and just talk quickly about like the leadership transition on the committee. And then I think we can dive uh, quickly into hearing from Superintendent Lindsay and, um, and then we can do the other agenda items um, after that. So um, just note that's like a slight change in the agenda, but we're well, we're happy to do it. And the third of the co-chairs. Great. Sorry to interrupt, but am I able to share my screen? I have a slideshow that I wanted <clears throat> to share with you all and I see it's disabled. Um, I think I am the host. Um, let me see. I'm not sure. Colleen, yeah, super, yes, excuse, yeah. I can super share now. Be able to share, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Great. Um, all right, Fred, I'm going to pass it over to you to just talk a little bit about the, the co-chair transition and, and all of that, and then um, we can, we can dive in. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I, I think the cat is out of the bag in terms of, uh, I'm very happy and proud to announce that uh, I've appointed uh, Jamie Eckstein and uh, Aaron Nazmazursky as co-chairs for the Education and Library Committee um, for the rest of this year. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy in terms of they, they really stepped up. Uh, I, I think the direction we wanna go on in is one of learning. I think that you know we've reconstituted the committee this year and one of the big challenges was kind of making sure we understood the lay of the land, what the issues were, who the people were, who the partners were in, in terms of education and library, uh, which which is why we you know invited uh, the superintendent for District 17 here, who's graciously accepted, and we thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and, and I say that you know I'm very happy that they've stepped up, uh, and I know that this is going to be a committee, a group effort in terms of learning together, getting information, and we're truly trying to figure out how we best as as a committee and as a community board to make an impact to definitely help uh, improve educational outcomes and support education in our district wherever possible. Uh, so with that, again, I thank uh, Jamie and Maz for taking this on. I thank all the committee members for, for the, the work you do, for your dedication, for coming in, for, you know, you know, for being open to, to, to learning new things. And, and again, to, uh, to, to Superintendent Lindsay. And with that, uh, I turn it back to the chair uh, to con continue with the agenda. Awesome. Thanks, Fred. Um, so I think right now we're going to have... Um, uh, Superintendent uh, Lindsay, speak to us a little bit at share um, about their experience within District 17, some of their priorities. I know that um, she had indicated she had a slideshow. So I know, um, Superintendent, we are very eager to hear about your experience within the district. Um, as Fred mentioned, we are um, sort of in a understanding the lay of the land landscape analysis, if you will, of like where uh, what's happening in our district, where can we lean in as a body, as a decision making uh, place and also just as a support for what's happening. Um, and I think we're really eager to hear um, from the DOE and, and like what you are experiencing within District 17. Because I know we are still sort of emerging from this pandemic and, and what does that mean educationally? Um, and and what, what can we do, um, like I said, as a group of people to support you in that work um, and where we might find points of collaboration. So uh, I'll turn it over to you. Um, I know we have a couple of questions that Aaron and I, uh, Maz and I sort of discussed previously and also excited to hear from other folks on the committee and some of our community members at large um, uh, who may have questions for you as well. So uh, whenever you are ready, take it away. Thank you so much for that wonderful welcome, Jamie. Um, once again, everyone, my name is Shanine Lindsay and I am the proud superintendent of Community School District 17. This is my second year as the superintendent of the district and I can't believe how quickly time flies. I did serve in the capacity of deputy superintendent from 2015 through 2021. So I know the district very, very well. And I'm proud to say that I have been instrumental in the progress of the district. 
So I'm going to take you through, you know, I was thinking about what I would speak to you about this evening. And I said, you know what? I have a slideshow that I shared with the community early on in the school year. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's a little long, but there's some key points on a few of the pages that I thought I would share with you. And then from there, um, I'll, you know, you can ask me whatever you want. And we can talk about how we can make a stronger partnership between the district and community board nine. So here we go. Give me one minute with sharing the screen. All right, let me get this on slideshow mode. Okay, so the first thing is in thinking about my work as a superintendent and the work of my team, I think about this quote from Michael Jordan, talent wins games, that's talent is all good, but teamwork and intelligence win championships. So I believe the key to building our school district and the school system is that we want to engage the community while striving for excellence and ensuring equity for our students. That means all students have access to the same thing. No such thing as the have and have nots in our district. Okay, and now for some reason I can't advance the slide. Okay, bear with me everyone. I am not a techie. I don't have tech support with me. So we're gonna have to do it like this, this way I don't have any um, issues. So to speak a little bit about myself as the deputy superintendent, as I said, I was part of the district for over seven years. So my sole responsibility was to oversee teaching and learning. And during that time, English language arts experienced a 25% increase of student proficiency, level three and four. Um, and in mathematics, we had a gain of 21% in mathematics. Um, right now, this has to be updated because again, this is a slide from September, but we have two schools that are cited from the state as being bottom 5%. And at the end, I can tell you a little bit about the work that we're doing to get those two schools back to where they need to be. As superintendent, I believe in leveraging quality professional development and training, collaborating with our stakeholders. And I have a very high bar of expectations for, and for communication to produce the following results. So this is a little bit of what we do. We have special education and English language learner task forces where we talk about the work, we action plan, and we also look at the data to think about the implications of our leadership and what we need to do to better support our students. Also, there is a teaching and learning task force that thinks about the state of education in our classrooms and what we need to do to make teaching and learning better. We have family engagement sessions to develop parent advocacy literally once to twice a week and on weekends we have a lot of family and community events we probably have more than any other district in the city and i'm very proud of the way that we support our families we have a district-wide screener so i can't wait until the end of the year to figure out if students are on track to passing the state test or mastering standards so the moment I became the superintendent, I put a universal screener in, in place. And I forgot to mention that I lead 32 schools in the district. So all 32 schools have an assessment that is taken at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year and the end of year. And I'm able to use that as a comparison to see where students are thriving, schools that might have a, a need for more support. And um, they help us gauge what supports are best for students. And since I've been in place, there has been a 20% increase in special education compliance. So I'm very, very proud of that. And we have had the highest English language arts progress on the 2022 New York State Assessment. And I have my fingers crossed that it will happen again this year. Um, we also have professional learning communities where our principals and assistant principals learn from one another. So what that looks like is one month, we host a principal or assistant principals meeting where they come in and they learn from us or from experts in the work. The following month, the principals will lead their own meetings amongst each other in groups of five or six 
highlighting a strong practice or exploring a problem of practice in their work. They visit one another and they give one another feedback. As a matter of fact, in June, our principals will ho be hosting a share fair to talk about the impact of the work they've done with each other, learning um, to build one another up. I'm gonna go to the next slide. And so here are some of District 17's goals and priority. Number one, I believe in social emotional learning. So every school should have joyful in school experiences. Again, I believe in equity and excellence in our schools, meaning every student has access to the same thing. It shouldn't be one school has more, more than the other. Everyone should have access to the same thing. So we, I do a lot of work advocating for all of our schools so that we meet the needs of every single student with the same resources. We also have very high expectations and we have rigorous teaching and learning in place so that our students have access to college and career readiness. Family and community is also something that we believe strongly in. So we have a wealth of workshops taking place regularly to support our families. And quality teaching and learning is also important to me. So I spend a great deal of time in the field, visiting schools, meeting with principals, and also supporting my team with training our teachers and other staff so that our students get a top-notch education. And I see a lot of people from District 17 logging on. I think my childhood best friend Shonda is also here. So I wanna give a shout out to the people who saw my tweet and logged on to support. And last, targeted support for students. This is my number one priority. So you heard me repeat a few times about equity and meeting the needs of all students. So this means looking at the data and determining which students need extra help. Every school in District 17 has a time where we block out and have all hands on deck where students receive support in the areas that they have not mastered. And with that, we have our beginning of the year, middle of year, and end of year assessments, and also in unit assessments to get a sense of what our students need further support with. And by doing this, we know we're meeting the needs of our students. We also have enrichment activities because we don't want to leave behind our students who are thriving already and excelling. So they help with tutoring our students. And we also allow them to engage in enrichment activities. So this is very long and lengthy, but this is an overview of our instructional priorities. So I'm not gonna read it word for word, but I will give you an overview of our goals and instructional priorities for the year. So the first one is in the area of literacy. Our goal is to increase student proficiency by 10 points. And we will do this by focusing on writing across the content areas, providing explicit instruction and foundational skills because we know if we don't teach our students basic fundamentals of reading from the early grades as they grow and go into the testing grades, that's when the problems arise. And once a student is two years or more behind, it is very, very difficult for them to catch up. The next is in math, we will increase student proficiency by seven points. So things have changed in mathematics. So you, many of you probably went to school the way I did. You learned how to solve a math problem step by step. So new age math is not done that way. It's conceptual where students have to think about different ways to solve the problem. So we want to make sure that students are able to think critically and conceptually. We also want them to be fluent mathematically knowing how to count in their head, knowing how to multiply, subtract, and not having to rely on your fingers or anything else, even though there's no problem with that. But we know when, we, when they get to the workplace, we want them to be fluent mathematicians and readers. And the next thing is we will increase parent and community trust in District 17 school by hosting events, workshops, bolstering positive relationships with the CEC, President's Council, PTA, and I'm gonna add the community board to that as well. We survey our families in the community three times a year to determine the needs and satisfaction with our schools. 
And shout out to Filton Lewis Thomas, who just logged on. And he's one of the people responsible for that work. We also provide greater supports to our multilingual learners and our English language learner students with disabilities and students with insecure housing. We ensure the individual needs of every student is met. And we also ensure that they receive their appropriate services. The next is we will ensure all schools implement practices which are culturally relevant and sustainable. We want to ensure that we understand the cultural experiences of every student. We want them to connect with everything that they read and that they encounter. And we know that when students see themselves and they have real life experiences in their learning, they tend to be more successful. And last, we will increase the June 2023 graduation rate to 90%. And guess what? When we got the data in January for the one high school that I lead, that high school has a 91% graduation rate. So we have to change our goal because we met the goal halfway through the year. So now we are aspiring to a 93% graduation rate for the one high school I lead, which is the high school for global citizenship. Now the road ahead is aligned to the chancellor's four pillars. So this is a lot of what we've been doing this year, scaling, sustaining, and restoring what works by engaging our principals in high quality professional development and also creating communities where our school leaders share best practices and they support one another. The chancellor's second pillar is reimagining the school experiences so we have our school leaders create action plans based on culturally responsive and sustainable education and supporting our district middle schools to brand through an equity lens. So we know that we've lost a considerable amount of students in our middle school. Something happens when our students leave fifth grade and they don't want to go to, most of them don't want to attend district 17 middle schools. So we've been working with the middle schools to get a sense of what that could be and learning how to better engage the community because great things are happening in our middle schools, but something is happening where people see the old school that was from back in the day from 1989 and 1992, but the same students are not there, the principal is not there, and it's a completely different school. So we're trying to get the community to understand that we have different schools than what was in place way back when. We also spend time prioritizing health and wellness by engaging in wellness workshops, seminars, and town halls, and we get grant money. I'm thankful for the grant money that comes in because it helps us to lay a support across the district. And then intentional parent engagement. We engage our parents in quality workshops and town halls that are informative, empowering and engagement, engaging. We don't have workshops where we talk you to death. We like to hear our parents and their voices. So most of our workshops are very much engaging and our parents love to engage and check, talk to us. And last, we create advocacy workshops that give parents voice. And we also have superintendent office hours. I love superintendent office hours because parents log on and they have an opportunity to tell, talk to me about anything they want. It's on Zoom. They log on and they can give a shout out for something that's working well, or they can say, Superintendent Lindsay, you know, it would be better if, and sometimes they share specific concerns about their respective school. And here's an overview of our partnerships. It's way too much to read, so I'm just gonna pause for a minute and allow you to take a look at all of our partnerships. But I will highlight a few partnerships that stand out, namely the partnership with Mega Everest College. We do a lot of work with them around our My Brother's Keeper and My Sister's Keeper, mentoring our boys and our girls to ensure that they have strong mentorship and they know that they can be anything that they want to be. Um, another strong partnership that we have is with the Bank Street Education Center. We receive a great deal of support on the middle school level in strengthening our student understanding of mathematics, as well as training for our teachers in the area of mathematics. And I'm going to move on. And if you want, you can take a picture of the slide because I know it's a lot. 
And you have to remember to add CB9. Okay, I will. And from there, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to stop. But we are a very busy district. We are on the ground and we are co so committed to ensuring that District 17 becomes the number one place for children to learn. I could go on and on and on about what we're doing, but um, that's an overview. And I, I spoke about intervention. I just wanted to make sure I address everything. And then I just wanted to quickly speak about enrollment because as I mentioned, um, enrollment in our middle schools is down and in some of our elementary schools. So we're working very closely with the division of planning at the Department of Education to talk about our brand. And they're gonna be investing some money in some of our schools so that we can rebrand. We also use social media. And what we found is that it's very effective. And I can tell you it's effective because I tweeted that I was gonna be out today. And most of the people that are here are people that I know personally that saw my tweet. So tweeting works as well. And in some of our middle schools that in the past had very low enrollment, they're beginning to see increases because they are tweeting and they are posting on Instagram about the work happening in their schools. And parents are going to the school to say, I want my child to have this experience. So I also use social media to show people the wonderful things happening in our district. So I'm gonna stop there. And again, um, I thank you for having me. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them at this time. Thank you so much for that overview, Superintendent Lindsay. It's really helpful. Um, again, thank you so much for being here. Um, I think we're we're really excited to, um, as a community board committee, to start establishing more of a um, of a relationship with you um, and and working with you. And I think um, I want to kick it off for questions. But I think one of our first questions is just, what do you think? Um, that we as a community board can do to work in partnership with you to help you accomplish some of these goals? What does that look like for you? So I would love for you all to partner with us in the area of supporting literacy. The number one thing that I really want to do in District 17 is to create a book swap in some of our corner stores or maybe a restaurant. You know, often as parents, or aunties or uncles, we buy books for kids, they read them, they outgrow them and the book sits in a corner, the book is not touched anymore, but there are children who need books. And so why not create a book swap? And I've seen this in other neighborhoods where it might be at the corner store, it might be at the local coffee shop, but I would love to partner with something like that where we have families and community working together to coordinate a book swap so that when parents, need a book for their children to read, they know I'm going to the corner store, I'm going to the coffee shop and I can drop a book and then I can take a book or I might not have a book, but I'm gonna take a book and when I'm done, I'll bring it back so somebody else can read it. So if we all donated books, that would be great. And I know in the Bronx, they have book vending machines. So there are sponsors who donate books and various places have these book vending machines that children can access. They get the book free of charge and they don't return it. So I would love for us to work on a literacy initiative together so that we can ensure that all students in our district have access to books. And let me just say this as superintendent of District 17, my expectation is that the principals are investing in books and giving our students opportunities to read books. However, we have a library and you know the books have to remain at school. So let's think about how we can ensure our students are more literate, and that would be great. Um, and we can also think about more opportunities to work together in the community. We have a lot of families that have located, relocated to District 17 from outside of the United States. So many, and they need a lot. I want to give a shout out to the Director of Community Affairs, Ms. Graham, who logged on, she and I, along with Filton Lewis Thomas and some other people who were on this Zoom, we gave out 500 pairs of sneakers to students, most of them asylum seekers. And we know that as the seasons change, that families, and I'm not just talking about children because mommy and daddy and auntie and uncle and grandma, 
they need coats and shoes too. So we take care of the whole family. So I would love to also talk about what can we do to support our families to ensure that they have everything that they need. We also recently had a resource fair last weekend where people can come in and get information about jobs, health insurance, whatever it is that they needed. We had one stop shopping at our resource fair. So it will be also great for us to think about how we can support our families who are new to the United States. Like I said, we gave out coats and boots, but you know, when they arrived here, they came in sandals. And we know that our children have grown since being here last school year. So are they ready for the warm weather? It's gonna be 80 degrees on Friday. Do, they can't wear the boots and the coats now. So we also need to think about what can we do to ensure that they are ready for this new season of spring and summer. So those two things are the top two things that I'm thinking about. And if you could just give me one second, my laptop is about to die, I'm sorry. And while I'm doing that, someone from my team is texting me. That would be Felton Lewis Thomas. And the one thing that he also knows that I would like to see on the district level is a district pantry. And I'll explain that in a minute. And thinking about the district pantry, we have so many families that are in need of food. And, you know, we've been keeping food, dry food at the district office, and we share with families as we find out about the need. And it would be great if we were able to have a pantry. So we know on Fridays at so-and-so time, we have an open house where families can come in in a structured manner to pick up food. Because we know, we know our students eat when they're in school. But from Friday night through Sunday, some of our children don't eat. And um, it would be great if we had a pantry. So I'm going to add those three things. And there is no immediate solution, but it's something that we can begin talking about and working together to support our community. That's great. Super helpful. And um, I hope that we can um, just make sure we have the right contact information to follow up with your office to make sure that, you know, as we potentially move forward on some of these things, we can we can be in coordination with you. Thank you. Is there a chat that my team's, because my team who does this work, they are here. So let me see. And if anything, we can email, um, I, I can email contact information, but um, Rose Graham, who is here, and Filton Lewis Thomas, who is here, they are the two core people who do this work for the district. And I know that they would love um, for the three of us to meet with you all to just to further think this out. Awesome. That's great. I, I don't believe there are chats in um, community board Zooms um, so that it's all just spoken and said out loud, but um, Khaled can, or Fred, go ahead. No, no, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so we usually typically keep our chats disabled, but the superintendent, if you could, if you could create a contact list and, and a summary of the things that, you know, we've discussed this evening, if you forward that to the office, absolutely, that gets forwarded to the entire um, and and I, you know I, I don't I don't want to speak for them, but I'm kind of chomping at the bit to kind of get to this as well. Uh, as a note, uh, I'm a D17 dad. All my kids went to D17 schools, so so absolutely I appreciate the work that 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 has been done over the years. Definitely understand that we've had some lean years in the district as well. But I'm really looking forward to all the great work that's going on. Um, I'm sorry uh, to turn it back to the chairs. No, thanks. Yeah, I think if, if, um, if you don't mind just sending those emails on to the district office, they can make sure that we all connect and then Jamie and I will make sure that we're, we're in communication and connecting our next steps. Um, awesome, I'm gonna open it up for more questions from other members of the committee or guests that have joined the call tonight. Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Lindsay. Um, I'm currently doing my research on gentrification and school choice in District 17. And um, I did hear you mention enrollment being down and this was one of my areas. I'm looking at how 
middle-class gentry parents can actually um, choose more of our local schools in the district. Um, and I just want to know what is your, what are your thoughts on um, school choice on gentrification and if you think that's affecting District 17. I do live in Crown Heights too. Um, so I for 20 years I've been here and I've seen the change and the difference. Thanks. Thank you. That's a good question. So the first thing is folks don't want to send their children to our schools because of old information. So I'm a product of Brooklyn. I grew up in Ocean Hill, Brownsville. So I remember back in the days, my parents saying, you can't go over by Wingate High School because they be shooting, they be robbing people and this and that, or so-and-so son got jumped. So, or you can't go to this school because we heard this. So now that was late eighties, early nineties. The year is 2023. However, people who lived as an adults in that time or people who grew up in Brooklyn like me and know the old Brooklyn don't necessarily know that Wingate High School, for example, is not Wingate High School anymore. There are three or four camp schools on that campus that have totally different names and directions, even though it's the Wingate campus. And the same thing happens with our district. So for example, we have several middle schools and elementary schools that have closed and opened up with new names. However, people still see it as the school from way back when it had the lowest scores in the district or teachers so-and-so hit the student way back when or so-and-so got jumped in the bathroom there. But our schools are safe. We have some of the lowest suspensions in our district, which is once again why I lean on social media to showcase the good work happening in our schools. And also school has to be interesting. There is so much competition across New York City. Parents can pretty much send their child to any school they want because every school in New York City is bleeding students. Every school has a shortage of students. So what are we doing to ensure that our students want to be in school? That means in addition to reading, writing, math, science and social studies, we have to make sure school is learning. I mean, I'm sorry that it's fun. So. Many of our schools have begun to have um, robotics. We've got students learning French. We've got students learning cosmetology. They're learning how to play instruments. They're coding, they're filmmaking. I can go on and on and on about the interesting happen things happening in our school. But the problem is if no one knows and they don't see the progress or the impact, why would someone send their child to the school? So we're doing a lot in the area of branding. And I actually attended a superintendent's meeting today where I was given access to a PR rep that I'm going to use pro bono to help me think about other ways that I can promote the good things happening in the district. So my hope is as the scores continue to rise, as we begin to implement more interesting programs in our schools, that parents will send their children to District 17 schools. And last, I want to say two things that was shared with me last year during a community conversation is that parents wanted to see more dual language programs and more international baccalaureate programs in our schools. And I am so excited to say that in the next few weeks, I will be announcing new IB schools. They are in the application process and getting training. We will have other schools that are applying for it. So we will have a connection between our elementary schools and our middle schools. There will be a bridge. And also we will have more dual language schools so that there are options in this community. Because what I also know, we're losing our babies to other districts because we don't have the programs that folks who are new to this district want. So I want to make sure everything is right here. So right now, folks are somewhere else. So believe me, Next year, they're coming back. Thank you so much. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can I make a comment? All right. So, so I'm Ms. Graham, and I just want to endorse what Superintendent Lindsay is saying that, uh, you know, under Superintendent Lindsay's, Lindsay's leadership, we are changing the narrative of Community School District 17. 
There are really some exciting things happening in different schools that she shared. And maybe you guys should follow us on Twitter because schools, schools are posting daily. I mean, I know recently we had one of the schools was on, um, it might have been some TV station. They're doing some amazing things. So you guys, you should follow us. I just also want to share that I'm also on Community Board 17. I'm the chair of the personnel committee and co-chair of the youth and education committee. So we got to come together. So I am excited about the partnership and I look forward to many more things and you're going to help us to become great again. Thanks so much, Ms. Graham. And I, I also wonder, this is for um, further conversation, but I also wonder what we can do um, as a community board to help you in that rebranding and narrative process. Cause I think there's a lot of outreach we might be able to think about as well. Um, Fred got his, Fred's got his hand raised. Yeah, just to the point, and I'll offer this on behalf of the district office uh, team. So anything, you know, please feel free to let, share with the D17 schools. If there's any events, there's good news. We have weekly e-blasts that we send out to the community. So absolutely, you know, you know, if you, if you want to get in contact with us, if there's things happening, if you want to send those flyers, we can make sure that that's included as part of that as well. Um, I mean, just off the bat, I mean, I'm not sure if, you, you know, there's still uh, school fairs or district fairs or anything like that of that nature. But I mean, if you're doing those, we can either help in terms of either co-sponsoring with you or supporting or advertising at the least. But if there's other roles, we can play with that. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Filton, can you share our events, our upcoming events? Mr. We Lewis? have a lot of events coming up, a lot. So we definitely could use the promotion. So we will take of you up course. on that. And as far as the PR, I would love to have follow-up conversation on that as well. And as the attendance coordinator, I'm looking for mentors. Oh, yes. We, yes, yes. we need to assess mentors. So I'm going to make that assess number four. Assess mentors for attendance. Yes, we have a fourth thing. We need success mentors because some of our babies are not attending school regularly. But here's what we realized. We adopted a school and many of us have students that have the lowest attendance in the school. We went to the school, personally introduced ourselves to the students, you know, got to know them and their story. And, you know, just getting to know them and their why, like, why aren't you in school? What's going on? And Ms. Graham can tell you, you know, we've got students excited about being in school because they don't want to disappoint us. We visit them. We bring them little treats and little gifts. So there's one little girl who someone else mentors that she's been in, the, in school the most that anyone has ever seen. So her success mentor gave her a pizza party with two friends during her lunch period. And it made this little girl's day. So just taking a few minutes out of your day, like it takes 10 minutes to go to a school and go, hi, how are you today? You know, I came to visit you. How's it going? And have a little chat. You know, I need you to be in school, give some motivating words. And just like even a pack of stickers makes the day of a five or six year old or, you know, an elementary student. So if you all would love, like to support us yes. with that, that's number four on our list. My name is Jane. Awesome. Uh, thank you for that. I want to open up. I know there was, a, I saw a couple of hands that kind of came up, came down. Uh, I want to acknowledge any folks who had a question. Yeah, that, that was me. Um, I, my name is Selena. I am actually one of the students at Megaver College right now. I actually went to um, PS 138, MS 138. That is a, one of the schools in District 17. Um, and I actually had a pretty good experience um, at my elementary and middle school. Um, I feel like what you guys are saying are pretty good ideas about the mentoring and the pantry ideas. I definitely agree with those, of course. Um, and just let me know if you guys, whenever you guys are taking it off the ground and are, you know, putting the plan in action. Thank you so much. Um, at the end of this chat, I would love to share my email address with everyone here. So, um, you know, if you don't have a pin, please grab one. So by the time we're done, you can take down my email address. And we will definitely get this started as we're thinking about the new school year. Thank you. No problem. Because I'm, for the most part, I'm still in contact with everyone that I went to middle school and um, in elementary school with. And I'm still pretty active in the community. So I feel like 
a lot of us would definitely be in, um, you know, would be willing to come out and mentor the kids and would, would definitely be interested in doing that, so. Thank you, we accept. Thank you so much. I see Mr. Almanor's hand up. You're on mute. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicholas Almanor. I'm a member of Community Board Line. I'm a member at large and I chair the Park Recreation and Culture Committee. In our committee, we're working on two initiatives that are associated with the school. One of them is a heart in the schoolyard, and the other one is a getting students from all grade level involved with the community garden, along with the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. I would love the opportunity for us to talk further about that. And uh, we've been working on it. Some of it we've been working for over a year because one of the ideas I came in, we want the new world in the school to reflect what the school is about. So this is, we're thinking about a multi-year program where we go from as many schools as we can within the community board line and get a teacher, an art teacher, and a group of students involved in really doing meal in their schools and reflect, uh, that reflect the name of the school, the community they live in, and so on and so forth. So we've been trying to develop that. And also the community garden, we want to bring the kids out to the community gardens as, as much as I can. So um, hopefully this is an initiative that we could work with the superintendency and get this and get those uh, uh, initiative out of the way. That's what I wanted to know. The other question I want, to, the other point I wanted to put up, uh, school have uh, parent coordinators. I, want, I don't know how much support do we have for the parent coordinators and uh, is there a way for really to bring them in a lot more into what's happening within the community board. So I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. So number one, thank you for offering um, to support us in the area of murals and the community garden. And I believe you mentioned something about libraries. We are open to having staff and students volunteer. I want, you know, I spoke about equity and we know we have a lot of haves and have nots in District 17, but we want students to understand, we're speaking a lot about giving, but we also want our students to understand the importance of giving back. So this is very, very important. So um, again, I'm gonna share my email address at the end. And Ms. Graham and Phil, you guys got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so, um, so I'm excited. And then in terms of parent coordinators, I have to tell you, this 17 has stepped their game up in a major way since yes. I have become the superintendent of this district. Um, it has been my number one priority to ensure that our parent coordinators get top notch training because they are the first person you should see when you visit a school. And they need to be equipped with the tools necessary to support families as they visit schools and also being able to outreach and partner with the community. So um, Philton is on this Zoom um, as well as Ms. Graham. And um, we can talk about ways to invite you all to our meetings so you can interact with the parent coordinators, especially those that are part of Community Board 9, their schools are nearby. We need to talk about this because our principals and our parent coordinators, they need to know who you are and you need to have your own relationships with them outside of the district. So. I think this is a wonderful start to having relationships with the community board and school specific, not just the district. Excellent. Jamie, you have your hand up <laughs> and I know you have some really good questions prepared as well. I do, it wasn't my hand, but I, I definitely do have a, um, a couple a thought or two um, and wanted to kind of understand um, a little bit of, of um, like, as we kind of go through this work, you've, um, Superintendent, you've indicated a lot of different groups and things like that. Is there anybody within District 17 or even outside of our district um, that we as a community board should be talking to um, as we think through, like, as we're in, engaging in like a landscape analysis and things like that, like whom else um, should we be talking to? Is there a group? Is there an organization? Is there an elected official? Um, is there anything like that that we should be sort of engaging with at this point? 
Absolutely. So every district has a group of parent leaders, which is called the Community Education Council. So you should engage with Community Education Council 17. Um, the president is Erica Kendall. And we also have a president's council, which is composed of all of our PTA presidents, led by President Veronica Clark. And the last person that, well, there are several people you could speak with, but the third one that I will mention is our city council member, Rita Joseph. She's the chair of education for New York City. And I'm glad that, you know, she belongs to District 17. So I have um, access. To, <laughs> she supports our schools. That's awesome. really helpful. Yeah, super helpful. Thank you. I think it was kind of in line with some of the things that we were kind of engaging and thinking about. Um, but I think it also just reinforces our, our need to, to reach out to those folks and, and hear what they're talking about too. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. And, and let me just share their information is on the Department of Education website. You can just type in Community Education Council 17 and you'll be able to get the um, email address. Um, I would say email is the best way to go for all of the um, stakeholders that I just mentioned. The President's Council information is also on the Department of Education website and um, our City Council member Rita Joseph as well, because I would give it to you, but I don't have a handy and I would have to dig because I, I all three stakeholders, I have a personal relationship with them, so I text them all the time. Perfect. That's really helpful. I think, I think Jamie has a couple more questions, but I... Um, also want to keep it open to any other community members that might want to speak up and ask some questions or committee members. So while we're waiting, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge one of the former Community Education Council presidents. I believe is on here and Miss Nicole Joe. She works for the Office of Family and Community Engagement now, but I see she's also here. So thank you for supporting Ms. Joe. I see Ms. Joe is trying to hide out on uh, over here. I see her as well. Yes. And I want to shout out my first year principal, Andy Duncan, who's here. She just became a principal in our district. She hasn't been a principal here more than three months, and she is just killing it. And she's an example. <laughs> of when I say that District 17 is about to be one of the best places to educate students, we are on their way. And how do I know? Because of the hiring decisions that I'm making. That's right. That's excellent. And if any of you, thank you for joining, wanna chime in and this can be a discussion. It doesn't just have to be a, a, a question session, but um, you know, any other inputs or ideas, would love to hear from more people. Um, I'm going to go with Celeste and then, um, who just raised her hand and then, um, Mr. Almanor, we'll go back to you. Um, good evening, Superintendent Lindsay. Thanks so much for being here and advancing, um, uh, District 17. It's really important, um, for our kids and for our community. So we we really do thank you on that. One of the things that I wanted to, um, understand a little bit better from your dialogue or discussion <clears throat> was, um, I guess, the increase in level three and level four scores. And I'm wanting to understand what that means. I'm just not so familiar with what those terms mean. And then secondly, um, as I have been looking at some of the stats and so forth on the um, Department of Education website, can you explain how um, District 17 fits into the picture of the city in terms of kind of rankings and schools, if that's possible, and the diversity of the, the district. I know there's a lot there, but I'm just really trying to understand the stats a little bit more to have this in context um, and to understand kind of how, how much progress you've made and, and how that is shown through the stats. Thank you. So I'll start with where you left off. It's hard to, to share where we are as far as ranking is concerned because the Department of Education discontinued that practice some years ago. So what I can share with you that I'm excited about is I know in the area of reading English language arts, I know we had the highest gains. We had the highest student progress in New York City. So while that's not something that's not published, I have bragging rights because I know that we made the most progress out of all student groups in New York City. So um. 
That's something that I'm proud of. Um, looking at the scores in comparison to other New York City school districts is another way where you can get a sense as to how we perform as a district. A lot of districts took tremendous dips because last year was the first time that students took the ELA and the math exam. So a lot of districts took a big, big dip. We did not. We had a, a small dip in mathematics. Every district in New York City had a dip, but um, ours was about two to three points, which is okay. I don't like a dip, but I'll take two to three over having a 20 point dip, which some districts had. And again, in literacy, we went up by about three to four points. So um, I do want to tell you a little bit about the scores on the standardized test, which you mentioned. So I spoke about level threes and fours. So New York state exams have scores of one, two, three, or four. If a student gets a one, they're below grade level. If a student gets a two, they are just making it. It doesn't mean that they're on grade level because they're still way below, but they're just making it and they can be promoted with a two or higher. A student with a three is on grade level. A student with a four is above grade level. I'm not sure where that weird noise is coming from. Okay. So I hope that was helpful and I'm not sure if I answered all of your questions. I think that's pretty much it, thank you. Okay. Fred, do you have your hand up? Yes, thank you very much again. Uh, you know, one of the things I was hoping, you know, because this is definitely one of those things that as a committee and as a board of learning, uh, you know, I've had some experience, uh, former PTA president, former on the president's council, and I was actually on the PEP at one point as well. And, and that touches on one of the, the more unpleasant aspects of that is with school utilization. So especially when the classrooms are empty, we have the shuffling and everything else. Uh, can, you, can you just describe a little bit the process and how the board might be able to be involved in that as well? And if it's possible for us to make sure that we're included in those conversations so that way we can come and support or, or advise as necessary. So I'm sorry, could you repeat, you said something about shuffling and I'm sorry, I missed it. Right, so I mean, the co-locations of schools. Oh, so co-locations, like, you know, okay. Yeah, co-locations, space utilization. There was a the whole process. I'm not sure if it's changed since my time uh, there, but I remember it was a whole process. Um, there, there used to have to be a joint hearing um, yes. There would be hearings in front of the PEP and everything. Mm -hmm. So my concern is because when you mentioned earlier about, you know, the utilization of people not staying in the district, uh, I wanted to know, you know, understand, you know, if you could share a little bit about the effects of that, uh, yes. if it's coming up. And at the very least, the ask is if we can be included, you know, when you get those notifications, just so that way we can be there to, to, to weigh in and support as necessary. So I'll start by saying District 17, we have one of the, some of the highest numbers of charter schools in New York's in Brooklyn. And so with that being said, co-locations happen because other schools such as charters are moving into our public schools. So um, we don't have that happening right now, but we're at risk every day when our enrollment drops because, you know, charters, folks are looking to, th this is prime real estate. So folks are looking to be part of our district. So what I'm doing is be I've become more strategic because I know if more schools open in our district, that takes away from the schools that are here. Charter schools are also struggling. I went to a superintendent meeting today and we looked at the data. Every single school in New York City, for the most part, struggles with student enrollment. So we've been very strategic about what we're going to do. Um, we partner with the Office of District Planning. And as we find out about things such as a co-location, which we're not experiencing right now, we do have a District 75 school, which is a school for special needs students, moving into a, um, one of our buildings, PS91. This is something that we welcome because our district has a shortage of schools for special needs students. So we welcome this. And, we, and one of my goals is to have more schools like this throughout the district so that our students do not have to travel across town to get the supports that they need. They need to have the supports right here in this district and not just on one end, all over the district. So that is a co-location that recently came up, but again, it's a co-location we welcome. And we did have to go through um, family engagement and PEP. We worked with the Community Education Council and the President Council 
And, you know, we all were in agreement that this is something that we wanted. So when we spoke, it was in a positive way. But moving forward, you know, as we think about the implications of low enrollment and the possibility of other schools moving into our, into our schools, we would definitely welcome your support to advocate with us. And I know our Community Education Council has been very vocal about things like this over the years. So I would definitely, if the time, if, if we need support in this area, I would definitely connect you with the Community Education Council because you guys got to remember, I work at the will of the chancellor. So typically when stuff like this happens, I'm very quiet and I let the community do what they do. So I would connect you to the Community Education Council who um, you all could partner together to talk about how to navigate those issues. Thank you. Mr. Almanor. Yes, I have two last question. Uh, well, Superintendent, I heard you mention about dual language program. Question I have, how many languages do we have dual language program and what are these languages? That's one number two, the availability of school building for community activity after school. What's the superintendency position in, in how for the community to have access in terms of either sports or, or, the, or additional artistic activity after school? Or community group. And last thing I want to say, I, I hope you'll be able to attend a resource fair coming up June 3rd. So I will get back to you about June 3rd. I, I got the invitation today, but June is a packed month for me. So I will get back to you. I'm going to try to figure out how to navigate all the events that I have on that day. So I'll get back to you about that one. Um, but I do appreciate, I want to say I appreciate being invited and I want to make sure that I make as many connections and I support our community and district events. So I'll get back to you on that one. And then as far as using space in our schools, um, there's a process of applying for a permit. And if the building is available on that day, you know, and the permit fee is paid and the permit is approved, then anybody can use a space in our Department of Education schools of course, when school is not in session. And third, um, right now we have our we have two dual language programs, mostly in our schools, which are Spanish and Haitian Creole. However, I have one school in particular that is working on a Mandarin dual language program. We don't know if it will be approved or not, but we're really, really hoping that we're able to expose our students to Mandarin because we want our students to be able to compete globally. And we know nowadays, if you can speak multiple languages, you can make a lot of money. Excellent. Um, well, it is just after eight and I wanna respect um, your time, Superintendent Lindsay. I know you've got a packed schedule um, really, really appreciate you accepting this invitation and coming to talk to us. I know that um, as a committee, we're really excited to be connected with you and with your staff, um, with Ms. Graham and Filton, and we look forward to doing further outreach and having more conversations. And hopefully we can actually make this an annual thing on the committee, at least at the very least, um, where we're, we're checking in. And um, hopefully by next year, we've already done a ton more together. So um, anything else anyone else would like to add before we let everyone go? Or everyone, Ms. <laughs> Superintendent Lindsay and, and staff go, we've got a few more agenda items for uh, community board members. Thank you for having me. This was such a pleasant conversation. And anytime you need my support or my assistance with anything, or you need me, to participate in the meeting, please let me know. And thank you all so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Excellent. Um, awesome. I believe this is, these are all, members of uh community board the of um the community board or members of resident members at large um thank you so much for joining us this evening um we're excited to kind of like 
do a little bit of a reset um, of this committee um, for this year and um, kind of just take the last 25 minutes of this call because I know Jamie and I are very committed to keeping these calls at no more than 90 minutes um, as their designated time um, to talk a little bit about, you know, what we're thinking for the next, obviously it's this meeting and one other meeting for this year, but hopefully sort of into the fall about what we're hoping to do and also get to know you all a little bit more. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think, um, Jamie, do you want to, do you want to talk, talk about, talk through this? open it up a little bit more sure yeah yeah i think i think what aaron and i were really talking about was like um obviously we're all sitting on a zoom at um 806 807 on a tuesday night and really i tried to identify like the why uh what's our why 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 are we here and really understanding getting a sense of like where people are coming from um their experiences in this work uh whether this work is in education whether it's an advocacy it's some combination of both and really just trying to get a sense of like wh what are we all bringing to the committee to then uh leverage that ability um and to then sort of seek out some of these things i know that our ability to talk to superintendent lindsay was by and large because we reached out to to them and her and their office um trying to to bring her in and have her speak to us uh but then also thinking about how we do this work and like what is our why around this um and wanted to kind of just really center that a little bit um and and get folks i know i've met some of some of you in person some of you we've just been on zoom um and wanted to really kind of um take that second to just recenter get that space and then kind of jump from there a little bit um so i will i will just jump in because i'm already talking um and sort of talk about my why um I uh, obviously live in, in CB9. Um, I work in education advocacy work. Uh, I was a high school teacher before um, in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm originally from. Um, and I got my master's from Teachers College in education policy. And I have been doing education policy and advocacy work for the last eight or nine years. Um, I worked in New York City schools doing some of this for a, for quite a long time. And now I work on a national campaign combating um, anti anti equity and anti uh, uh, CRT work anti critical race theory work book bans things like that across the country and so I'm really committed to inclusive positive educational experiences for kids um, from everywhere and so um, that's kind of my why I show up because I'm I want to know I want to understand and I also want to uh, leverage the experience I have to do some of this work um, I'm gonna kick it to Celeste um even though she doesn't know we're doing popcorn uh because she's next to me on the screen um so i i feel um woefully unqualified to be on the committee because i don't have an education background um so i'm a, a product of public schools but in philadelphia i think i've told you guys that before so i have a real passion about um, public schools and then educating our kids properly um, so that's why I've, I've come to the committee, but I have no work experience that would really um, would really further anything relating to the committee. But obviously, I'm here to 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 help um, kind of further whatever I can with respect to the kids in the community, um, whether it's drives or you know, or and I, I thought about um, certain things. I think mentoring <clears throat> is not really. Um, kind of something that would really be the most suitable um, because I think a lot of these kids need people who are a lot younger and who can um, relate to in, in that way. But I'm sure there are things that I can do and, and add some value to the, the committee. So I'm I'm kind of like a willing um, worker, um, but, but not one with an education background. Thank you, Celeste. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah, me and me and Aaron, we're gonna work on this like tag team thing where we like who who tags when. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. work on that. We're yeah, gonna... we're working on it. No, I was just gonna say, Celeste, feel free to tag team or like popcorn it to the next person to kind of introduce themselves. Oh, okay. So um, I'm trying to see. Are you uh, talking about committee members? Yeah, we're all committee members now on the. Calls, so. Okay. Um, so Maureen, I think I'll um, send it to you next.
Maybe Maureen had to step away. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure um, who the next person is. It's, the, um, it's reading in job. Um, so I'm not sure who that is. So um, maybe I can kick it to you. Uh, I guess not. As well. but, but just to tell you a little bit about Ms. Job. Uh, when Job, we talk about okay. parent activists, yeah, when we talk about parent activists, she's definitely one of the people who's been in the trenches in terms of she knows C, uh, D17 intimately, been involved as a parent on leadership levels in the CEC, done a number of different things. So, I mean, I'm happy she's here and she's you know definitely one of those people that at some point I would definitely love for her to be able to connect and share some of her experiences. And, and I think I, I, I feel comfortable in saying this, that she and I kind of started out in that same place. Obviously, she's way further. But when you get into this, we really don't know what we don't know. But I think part of the reason why I was happy to see this conversation today is because we're raising the level. We're raising the level. We're, we're getting more acquainted with what it is. And as we keep doing it, we'll see the places that seem more appropriate for us to get into. And you know, even if it's not your space there, and sometimes it's not even necessarily I don't want the committee to think you have to do the work. So you have to commit to 1,500 hours of, of mentorship. That's not what it is. I think what we want to do is identify the areas where we think we would want to try and you know engage and make an impact and think of what's the strategy for that. And at which point that's going to go to the exec and it's going to go to the board. You know, I don't want you to think it's going to be by yourself. It's going to be, there's going to be a board behind you uh, once you've thought it out in terms of mapping out that strategy. And then we proceed from there. So, so definitely don't feel that this is a lift that you have to lift on your own. Um, you know, once we identify that and kind of massage it and work it out what it is that we think is the best place for us to be, the best spaces. We carry it on from there. Okay, thanks, Fred. So, um, so since Ms. Job is not um, able to connect, I see Maureen is back um, with audio. So Maureen, uh, I will kick it to you for your um, introduction as well. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry, when you said my name before, like all the tech issues started happening, my computer already died, I'm on my phone. Anyway, so <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. I I have been an educator for 18 years um, in public schools and charter schools and um, internationally for a couple years and in some like nonprofit education work, really with the the aim of of um, giving all kids the opportunity to fulfill their potential and you know I think learning about um, inequity in education and, and everywhere in all systems um, and specifically racial inequity. I think that is, that is a big um, motivate, motivator for me and driver for me in, um, in doing the work that I do. And a parent at my school, Melanie Lewis, used to be the chair of the committee and she originally got me interested and, you know, was, we were partnering on things together. And I was like, what is, what is the community board? <laughs> like, what is it? Um, what work are they doing? And so that, that was what really got me interested in, um, in joining the community board. So I've been interested and, or a part of it, um, ever since. And I will pass it to um, Nicholas. All right, so let me talk a little bit about myself. So I'm retired after 35 years teaching in New York City Department of Education. I'm a, I was a chemistry teacher. I've been, did most of my teaching in District 17. Uh, I'm a graduate of Wingate High School and taught at Prospect High School for 29 years, five years at Brooklyn Technical High School, and the last 10 years I've worked as a home instruction teacher. So I've been teaching and, and home instruction after everything from uh, special ed and K-12. Uh, so uh, education was close to me. 
So uh, I'm, I'm a teacher of art, so I've, I've been turned on to teaching for a long time. And I could see, I mean, being, in the, being around so long, I see a lot of, the good thing about teaching is that you could see the result very quickly because I could walk down the street like I was at the uh, soaring in the other day for the new board members at uh, City Hall and one of my students was there too and gone up to me. So that's the pleasure you get. I work into National Grid. I find one of my students was, in, was an engineer working there. So that's the pleasure you get from doing teaching. You could see it's so good and you could see the difference that it makes. So I always been about community work and I started this since college. In college, and I think I was part of a group of people that started the first career day for Haitian students. I'm a bilingual science teacher, by the way. And, uh, and which is still going on. And joining the community, but is a way to give a lot more back. And I'm really uh, enjoying what I'm doing. I don't know if you miss my, what I said before. With the community I'm, in, uh, I'm working in, I'll look for any way to include students into the projects we're doing. Because I think that's the most important thing to that. We got to create the, uh, we got to make the next leaders of tomorrow. And I believe truly as a community, but this is something to, to encourage. So I'm retired and enjoy doing that. So, okay. That's about me. So, who, who has not spoken? Who's next? Is it uh, Erin? Uh, thanks so much. <clears throat> I think I'm the last one, unless Ms. Job wants to chime in. Um, but yeah, um, I so I joined um, CB9 last summer. So this is my first full year um, as the community board member, uh, as a community board member. Um, I've, I've done my work and background is in community organizing and supporting um, grassroots social justice movements in the US and actually around the world. Um, and after leading an organization that um, supported a lot of movements globally, I was very excited to just um, really dig into my New York City roots. I've been in CB9 for 10 years now. Um, this neighborhood and community means everything to me. Um, if you couldn't see, I now have a two-year-old son who um, is growing up in the district who, um, you know, it is extremely important to me that he has not just a public education, but obviously a great public education. Um, and um, that more people and families choose, um, choose public education. Um, I see it as really sort of a moral issue, a social justice issue, um, and a way that all of us um, need to invest in where we live and sort of, um, and in our values. And so, um, you know, this, it's a very, it's not only a personal issue, but it, it's really kind of like a, a moral one for me um, that I feel really passionately about. So I'm really excited, but I would also say that I don't, you know, like you Celeste, I actually don't have an education background. Um, I'm, um, I have an organizing background. Um, I see the intersection of a lot of issues and how they come together and, and kind of understand the importance of education, but I'm learning a lot from Jamie just working together. Um, and I think that's something just for all of us on the committee. I'm excited that Maureen, you also have an education background and, you know, we can all kind of learn um, and, and go through this together. Um, so, so yeah, um, I felt like today's um, Superintendent Lindsay was so extremely helpful. Um, and I know we talked kind of early on in these committee meetings about doing, um, dare I say, like a listening tour, but really what that means is just bringing the stakeholders in so we can hear from them, learn from them and help better understand um, the roles that we can play as a committee to support education in the district and the people who as full-time leaders are um, are doing this work. Um, so I think one of the things we wanted to talk to you all about is um, continuing this process of actually like every meeting, and I know we're taking a summer break, but every meeting bringing on um, a new stakeholder that we can learn from. 
while we also talk about, you know, I think actually Superintendent Lindsay gave us a lot to discuss and think about in terms of um, how we want to, you know, support the district. Book swaps are a great idea. Clothing, you know, drives and um, supporting new families is a great idea. Um, and there are a few others in there that, um, you know, I, I'm excited to kind of dig in with you all um, on this committee. Um, just in order to be proactive and make sure we have some of those stakeholders lined up, um, I've already been in touch with Dante about um, the next meeting. For the next meeting, we're actually hoping to invite, we're going with the heavy hitters um, at first, and then we'll, you know, like the, the, the horse's mouth uh, unofficially, which is um, since we're education and libraries, we are inviting the three head librarians for um, in for the three libraries in CB9 to the meeting to kind of hear from them um, and sort of about what they're, you know, what they're doing, issues they're facing. Um, you know, some of this came about because there, I think there is um, a bit of a crisis in particular with the Crown Heights Library um, in terms of, um, which we'll hear, have them hear more about it, but we wanted to hear from all the head librarians um, just to get a better, again, lay of the land, landscape in a similar way that we did from Superintendent Lindsay. Um, hopefully they accept the invite, um, but we wanted to go ahead and, and do that outreach, like I said. Um, but I think one of the things Jamie and I are really hoping to do is really just get you all's input. Um, you know, I think um, Superintendent Lindsay laid out three more people we would probably want to invite um, to these meetings in terms of the CEC, the President's Council, and, and Representative Joseph, um, or Council Councilperson Joseph. Um, but uh, but yeah, we, we want to hear from you, get more ideas, and kind of make sure that we are approaching this work in an informed, um, informed and collaborative way. Um, so yeah, any, anything else to add, Jamie? No, I think you captured it well. I, I honestly, it truly, I think it is a collaborative effort of all of us um, um, bringing in what we understand, what we know, who we know, um, and really trying to think through like, who, who do we do, who can we talk to, but also like not also sitting in that space of just information gathering, but then trying to then move to that place of action. And so I think that that's kind of where we're, we're in that place of information gathering a little bit, a lot, we're a little bit, a lot of it, but then also in that same space of like, then what do we do? What's the action piece of that? Um, and I think that the, the libraries is a really good piece to that. Um, but then also then going through to um, how, what do we then do? Um, and how do we then figure that part out? Um, and I think that's where we want to really truly, I say we collectively, we not like we, Aaron and I, but like we collectively, um, who do we need to talk to? And then also who do we need to like activate? Um, who do we need to be activated by to then do some of this work um, to like really like activate us to um, be a body? Because something that that um, we've talked about a little bit has been this space of like, other committees have people who come to them with questions and concerns and um, ideas. And we haven't had that in our committee yet, where people are coming to us being like, this is a thing that's happening in my community. And yet we heard a superintendent speak for many, many minutes around what is happening. And so how do we then bring in these pieces of, I have a question about this. What, who, who do I talk to about this? And how can we be that? So I know I kind of talked about it many things in that one moment, but like, where are we at right now? I know Nicholas has his hand raised and I definitely want to chat with him um, and get him to share his thoughts. Um, and also just thinking through like, who are those people that we are all connected to? Because we all are connected to the community in different ways. And who, are there people that we should be talking to? Um, we should invite to these spaces too. Because uh, it's not just superintendents and community members and, and council members. And it is also the community and who are those folks that we should be talking to? Um, two, um, and who should be sharing their experience with us. So um, I'll kick it over to uh, Mr. Amanor to, to kind of uh, share his uh, insights. Uh, my insight is that I'm glad this community, not everybody has some uh, school background or education background because you need all perspective. I'm hoping, one of the things I'm hoping is that we get some students next year to be part of this. Uh, so you get that perspective. 
you get parents that be part of that. You get that perspective. That way you can see everything. So because uh, the, the philosophy we believe in, everybody in the school building is part of the education process, even the custodian. So you want, you want to get all that perspective so you provide the student the best possible experience that you have in a school building and the education uh, within the within, uh, best possible thing for the education of you. So that's oh. what I wanted to mention. No, I think you're, you're totally right. I, I mean, I remember <clears throat> I was a, also a, a sports coach. And so um, my uh, my favorite person was Rusty, the janitor, the custodian, because he had a key to everything, just a giant ring of keys. And so whenever I need anything, I was like, hey, Rusty, can you help me with the thing I need? So I definitely I definitely feel that. So um, I know I, we're bumping up on time that Aaron and I were very committed. And Maz, we're very committed to the 90 minutes because we all I know we all wanted to make our time meaningful. Um, but also make our time um, respectful and honorable to everyone's um, outside life in this space. Um, so obviously, let's speak through the next three minutes. And also, let's let's dynamically use the email, um, send things back and forth. Let's make this as, as much of a loop um, as we can, as we kind of create this dialogue, create um, opportunities to, to meet people. Um, and to connect with folks that maybe we didn't really understand or think about before, but now we want to bring into the conversation. So I'm going to stay off mute on purpose, uh, but somebody else, like, if you want to have ideas and thoughts, um, please feel free to come off and just start talking. One other point of business is that if you would like to email me and give me permission to share your email with the other committee members, um, that is very helpful because I'm not able to do that without your direct permission, um, which means that we can actually be on an email together. <laughs> it's like a one way Jamie and I to you uh, conversation, um, unless you say, email me and say, please feel free to share my email amongst the other. I believe there's eight of us um, other committee members. So, um, if you don't mind doing that, that would facilitate our ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. Unless, Fred, do you have better? Would you? Yeah, go no, ahead. It just makes it easier. If you're okay with it, just email back to the office and say I'm okay to share with the committee members, and you know they can send out a contact list for the committee. Okay. I'm also happy to do that to so that the office doesn't have to have to do that unless the office like needs that official permission um blah, blah. so you want everybody to contact you or you want yeah to i'm happy for people to just email me directly and say like feel free to share my email so that like the district office has enough going on i'm happy to just no you know do that unless the district office is like no for legal reasons like they have to email us no, that's fine. Ball and okay. Back. Okay, cool. Great. Feel free to email me. I'll keep track and yeah. Great. Okay. Well, we really hope you all join again next month. I don't know the exact date, uh, but a month, uh, generally a month from today. Um, and hopefully we'll be welcoming the head librarians for our district libraries. Um, and I will call this meeting to adjournment at 8.30 p.m. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Thanks. Good night. Thanks so much for all the committee and the chairs.